<laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I am a credit repair specialist, a credit repair expert. I am the owner of Fix My Credit Now 850.com. Uh, and I'm also the host of this podcast. Welcome. What's good? Happy holidays, all that jazz. <laughs> but anyway, let me get to it. So, um, like I told y'all before, we're going to talk more about business, getting business credit. I'm trying to get y'all to get your personal credit fix so you can hop on over to the business side. And as I'm talking about it, I'm recognizing that, hey, a lot of y'all don't have businesses. And some of y'all may feel intimidated, like, hey, I don't know how to start a business. I don't know what business I would get into and all that. So I was like, all right, boom, let me just pick this apart for y'all and help guide you, maybe give you some ideas of where to start. So if you could take a look at the title, 10 businesses you could start, make your side hustle, your main hustle. So I said that intentionally because even if you don't really have a hustle per se, you probably have skills that you utilize on a regular basis. Don't realize that it could be a hustle. It could be your main source of income. It could be your your job, your business, your company, you know? So, and some of y'all do have hustles, side hustles, and um, you just haven't made it officially a business yet. But I just wanted to give y'all some ideas. So, like, for example, think about your personal life, right? Like, Thinking about what you do on a daily daily basis, what are you good at? You know, are you good at talking, right? Are you good at storytelling? Do people come to you for advice? Are you really good at like cleaning and cooking and things like that, right? So like start there, right? And even if you're not necessarily great at these things, are you good at management? Do you have a big family where the family has skills, like the family can clean or cook and you're just good at organizing and getting people together like so you kind of kind of think like that you know so one of the first things that popped into my mind uh as one of the top uh one of the first ideas was being a hairstylist all right you could be a hairstylist i know um People know how to do hair they know how to do wigs and weaves and even being a barber uh, you can start from home. You can build a clientele. I know people that have been doing hair in their what basement, in their kitchen for years. Like, that's pretty classic. You dig me? So start off there. Now, do you know people like this? I'm sure you know people like this that are, do hair, your auntie, you know what I'm saying, your, your grandma, you, you know, your, your sibling, whatever. You could be that person. If you're that person, think about it. Like you can make this a legitimate business. All right. Now I'll give you a quick, quick, quick story. Now, when I was, as you know, I, I went to barber school back in Philly, <laughs> back in Philly. Uh, I was in barber school for like five minutes. It was a program where you went to barber school for about, I think it was like a 10 month program. I was there for four months, I dropped out. <laughs> but when I was there, I was surrounded by men and women who were students. They were cutting hair for years. They were barbers for years. Um, the one female, she was she was mad good at cutting hair. Uh, she had brothers, so her brothers taught her how to cut their hair so they didn't have to go to the barbershop yeah so she already knew how to cut hair she just needed to legitimize her business and honestly that was most of the people there I was different I wasn't I did I literally if you remember my story on me going to barber school I literally just woke up one day and was like you know what I like guys I like hair I like being around guys and hair it's <laughs> So let me be a barber, right? That's why I dropped out. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. I also felt like I was still at somebody else's spot. You know I mean, so yeah, I dropped out of barber school after four months. But anywho, the point was I was around a lot of people that um, were doing this as a side hustle and were making it a legitimate business. Another thing I did when I was in barber school for the five, the four or five minutes, uh, I decided to 
start making a, a, a income with it. So I was there for a short period of time, but if y'all know my stories by now, like I pump myself up. I believe in myself so much. If I envision something, I try to bring it to fruition. And in my head, I was already a master barber. Did I ever cut anybody's hair before I went to barber school? Nah, negative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what I was going to do was start um, cutting hair in my home. And that's what I did. I was like uh, either 18 or 19 at the time. And I pulled people from the neighborhood, people I didn't even know, know pulled strangers off the street. And one thing, um, especially at that time, I was cute. I was slim. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if I told a guy, hey, I'm going to cut your hair, they'd be like, okay, um, sure. Why not? And I would charge these people. The reality was, I was practicing on these people, yo. I was practicing on their hair. And like people were coming to me with these ideas. They wanted a fade. They wanted, you know what I mean, some hair on the top. And you listen, all I could do was a number one. Put that one, number one guard on, cut it back, call it a day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, and I could do a shape up. My shape up game was on point. Yeah, sideburns might have been a little lopsided. You know what I'm saying? Put some points on the edges and <laughs> put leave you on your merry way. And I would make sure these guys paid me. So naturally, uh, that business did not last long because word got around. I was cutting people in the ear and putting bald spots in the back of their heads. But you get my drift. <laughs> but that personally wasn't my calling. But I know it is for a lot of people. Like I said, I went to school with, with a lot of y'all. Um, you guys do amazing work. Being in barber school, I was able to see that there were different sides to being a barber. It's not just strictly cutting hair. It's about taking care of hair and stuff like that. And a lot of people already knew how to do that. And again, they were try there to make their side hustle a main hustle. Now, another thing is being a housekeeper. Um you can do that. Like there's, and there's so many platforms, by the way, when I go through this list, there's platforms that you can just hop on, uh, create yourself a little profile and start working through with these uh, platforms and start getting paid off it. If you're ever interested, let me know. But being a housekeeper, you know, if you're one of those people that can clean the shit out of your house, just uh, all around clean, neat freak and all that. Again, you got family that can help you or maybe your friends, you know, just get creative. Um, back when I was living in Maryland, uh, there was this uh, service, this maid service that called Molly Maid. I'm sure y'all might have heard of it. Uh, and I spoke to the owner before and the owner was telling me her story. It was pretty, pretty interesting, but it just started off with her. You know, it started off, off with her cleaning one house there, one house here, so on and so forth, until she built a, a very successful empire. So all it takes is a skill that you may already have, you know, start with your own home, do before and after pictures, get creative. One of the the amazing things about being an entrepreneur is that you can be mad creative, and the more creative you are, the more you stand out and it separates you from other people within your industry. But people also love pictures. Like they love that before and after shit. And I know I do. I mean, I could sit on my phone for quite some time <laughs> just zipping through pictures. But the before and after really gets people. So just do a lot of before and after. Like even if you don't like, like take, um, you know how they have those stoves, like take a nasty ass stove or whatever, take a picture of what it looks like when you, uh, before you cleaned it. And then after you clean it, you know, do a split screen, start posting it up. Even if you don't really have things to show, like, I don't, I don't know anything that grimy and dirty, make it grimy and dirty and just be creative. But being a housekeeper, it, it can make you a whole lot of money. Um, like I always tell people, especially when you're first starting, you undercut the competition, you know, so especially if you're just starting, make yourself very presentable, professional looking at all that, get a little logo popping and start advertising. Check out the other housekeepers in the area, 
and see what they're charging and undercut them and show and prove build clientele and boom there you go you got your business right there um also companies office buildings same situation you know that's a steady check right there that's a steady stream of income so consider that consider that now the next thing on my little list here is social media, right? We're going to get into that just a little bit because the reality is that's what the world has turned into. Just everything is on social media. We're advertising on social media. We're talking on social media. We're posting up on social media. When I'm done recording, I'm going to post on my social media platforms, okay? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Believe it or not, I'm not that great at social media, like social media ads and posts and PowerPoints and things like that. Like I, I make it do what it do, but I know I'm not the best at it. So maybe you are, maybe you are, maybe you're skilled like that. Maybe you can make amazing social media posts. Maybe you can make little commercials that's captivating. Um, I, I'm just not great at that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I know if I'm not that skilled in it, I know tons of other people are not that skilled in it, but you may be very skilled in it. You might be skilled in it and don't even really know. So here's the thing, like just to test your gangster, go on Canva, right? Go on Canva. It's a free app. I do believe you can pay for it. I pay for it because I use it all the time, right? Um, and it's under my business, but go on Canva or even go on PowerPoint. There's a whole bunch of different free options you could try. Start making dummy social media posts, social media commercials, all right? Play around with it and see if you have a knack for it. See if you can make these amazing creative posts as commercials, um, PowerPoint presentation joints, like whatever. And if you know that you're good at this and you feel that you could do a really good job at it, make it a business show. Make it a business because many people aren't visually creative in that aspect. And you might have, in my opinion, I feel that like that's a gift. Um, I, and there's a difference between a gift, gift and a talent, right? So some people are talented and shit and then some people are gifted. If you may have that gift and don't even know it, you know, you are extremely creative. You got a good eye for colors, patterns, designs, you know, what's catchy to the eye, make it a business. All right. Make it a hustle if you need to just to, again, get your clientele up. But for the most part, that is something that is never dying. It's an industry that's never going anywhere anytime soon. Hop on that thing. All right. Hop on that thing. Now, staying with the whole social media joint, social media manager, right? So get involved in social media management. You can provide guidance to people that are ignorant, such as myself, with social media. You can help people uh, that are up and coming. Uh, manage their business, advertise on social media. If you do know how to do ads, maybe you want to do both, do ads and and manage your social media. I know these are two different worlds that work very closely together. Both are time consuming. That's why I was making it, them separate because the little bit of art that I do for my own business, I can be on here for hours. I don't know if it's just me because I'm not that great at it, but I know if I really took the time out to do ads and commercials, I know it's mad time consuming. Also, trying to run my social media platforms, all of them, and I don't even know all of the the platforms that I actually need to be on that's popping and the, like the Snapchat, like I'm not on Snapchat, things like that, like threads. Like I have a threads account, yo, but I don't be going to join. I don't even know how to work it. And that's where a social media manager would come in. Uh, learn the basics. Get on a uh, YouTube university. <laughs> okay. Like you may have yourself a huge following or a good following on all these social media platforms. Why don't you set up a business 
that will help other businesses do the same. Make sure they have a huge social media platform. Make sure they're set up on all social media accounts. Maintain it. Watch over it. Build it. Allow it to grow. So on and so forth. If I had something like that, I would be amazing. Like that brings in business that lets other people know that that business exists on a larger social media scale. So consider that. Consider that. And, and think about it. Some of the stuff that I'm bringing up, you don't even have to leave home in a lot of cases. These are, some of these ideas are work from home businesses that you can start. Now, another thing, online, online tutoring, okay? Online tutoring where you can obviously help kids, adults, whomever, on a particular subject, you can teach them. If you're a good teacher, uh, you have the patience to do it, definitely, definitely look into this. Uh, even if you already have a job and you're a trainer you, and you've trained people before, even if you don't have that title per se, this is a, a resource and a skill that is in high, high, high demand. People are constantly learning. They're in the comfort of their own home. They're on social media. You see social, you'll see classes all the time, courses. I even have a course that I sell, you know. Um, but if you want to do tutoring, if you want to do some online education, uh, there's even uh, people that need help with language or they're trying to learn a language or perfect a language, so on and so forth. Do that. Do some online education, online tutoring, online classes. Have some uh, courses set up. Sell them. Sell them. Advertise them. Link up with other social media partners and maybe your friends with that have a whole huge following like I was stating before and then let them advertise your shit that you're teaching classes and so on and so forth like I'm telling you I'm trying to tell you this entrepreneurial shit is what it is it's the business man it's the business make it into a business make this hustle a business for you okay and then get that money man get that business credit and grow and develop all right now this kind of uh, is still on the social media or online service type of thing, being a virtual assistant, okay? You can provide administrative support to businesses by offering virtual assistance. You can manage emails, schedule appointments. You can handle tasks remotely from the comfort of your own home. You can help other entrepreneurs. It's it's a lot. Like I have a virtual assistant. My virtual assistant is amazing. She does everything from, you know, managing my books, my taxes. She takes the phone calls. She does the emails, you know, organize. She helps me organize my life. So it, I can predominantly focus on the business. If you're good at that, and you're probably doing that anyway, right? You're probably doing that anyway with your job. Here's a sign. Do it for yourself. Start your own business. Do it for yourself. And you know another thing you could do? I actually encouraged my assistant to do this, and she did this. Like, she knows she has a huge family, right? And they need work. Uh, I encouraged her to start her own like staffing company because I initially met her at a staffing company and they were doing her so dirty. It was ridiculous. Like, um, I don't know if anybody's worked for a staffing company before. I actually have a story on that. I'm not going to share with y'all right now. I'm going to stay focused on the topic at hand. But I was, in a nutshell, I was red flagged from the whole staffing community. Yeah, 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 yeah. My last staffing job, I worked for an hour left and then called back and demanded my check for an hour. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> but they were, this particular staffing company where my assistant came from, she, they treated her so, so poorly. They treated all of them poorly. And my most recent assistant, well, not the one I just fired, I fired her sister, but um, the one that works for me now, 
currently she's been with me for it looks like going on two years she is amazing but they treated her so poorly and they were only giving her a third of her check yeah and all that she does and I gave her a raise and they never gave it to her like it was mad messy so I know y'all have some stories and sometimes when you're working for someone as a, an assistant, whether it's virtually or physically, sometimes people do not really respect the position that you're in and don't necessarily pay you accordingly, uh, treat you with the same respect that they give others in higher positions. But this way, you're creating the narrative. When you make this your own shit, it's about you and yours and what you will and will not tolerate. You understand what I'm saying? Again, another positive thing about being an entrepreneur, you can control what you will and will not accept. It's your shit. Who's going to tell you no? Who's going to tell you no, right? You don't have to take anything lying down when it's your stuff. But being a virtual assistant, getting on point, is definitely in high demand, is much needed. Go ahead and go ahead and do that, man. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. (laughs) Now, another thing back on social media, again, being a social media consultant, leveraging social media, your expertise, giving your, um, uh, your expertise for businesses or how they can improve their online presence. That's a thing. That's, that's legit a thing. Um, when I first started trying to understand, let's say Facebook and the Facebook algorithm, this is like a couple of years ago, I want to say a strong three, four years ago, maybe, I was struggling trying to figure it out, yo. It, it was I needed help. I needed some sort of guidance. And what I did was I went on YouTube and I tried to YouTube University in my ass, and I I couldn't do it. It was just too time consuming. It was too confusing. Everybody was saying all this stuff is it was it was bananas. So again, this is something as a a, a new business, especially back then, I would have totally use. This is a service I would have used with no problem. Whatever it is, I need to pay you. I need your, I need your expertise. Let me know. Point me in the right direction. You understand? You can offer a consultation. Bring people in. Do Always do the free consultation, people. All right? Because the thing is, it's like, I don't know you. You don't know me. Let's sit down and talk to each other what are your needs? This is what I offer. Do we fuck with each other? Yes or no. And then you move forward. You understand? So offer that free consultation. All right. It's very important to your business. Don't be charging people for a dumbass consultation. It's like, let's be smart about it. You're trying to bring in business. You're trying to show people what your capabilities are. You're trying to understand what their needs are and how y'all can help each other. Then you start talking prices and whatnot, but don't be, cause I see some people out here charging for consultations and see, I do free consultations by law under the, uh, the F damn, it, I forgot the act, but as credit repair specialists, we have to offer free 30 minute minimum consultations. Okay. Now, mind you, most of the time when y'all talk to me, you know, we're talking way longer than 30, (laughs) way longer than 30 minutes. I'm trying to practice getting that down. I think I've gotten that almost perfected, but some of y'all just bang with me and I, and I fuck with it and I appreciate it. You dig me? So that's what's up. Anywho, I've seen companies because they're just grimy and they're just, just in it just for cash. I get it. We don't work for fun. I get it. I get it. But there's, everything isn't for sale. And a consultation, in my opinion, isn't for sale. You're going to catch more bees with honey, right? You're going to catch more bees with free consultations than you are charging motherfuckers for some information when they just have a few questions. You dig me? I, I don't know. But yeah, offer the consultations, people advertise that you have free consultations, especially when you're dealing with people 
in an industry that's charging for consultations and time. You dig me? And then just just help guide them. So let me let me give you a quick quick little backstory. So I told you I had my first business. It was called Diamond Entertainment Management. And I thought I was blowing up like the rock. You, you dig me? I thought I was the next biggest entertainment manager, whatever. But back then I didn't know anything about business at all whatsoever. Social media wasn't popping like it was like it is today, but it was kind of starting to go in that direction. So it was like fresh out the MySpace era. Facebook is mad new. Like it was like that. Like most people had MySpace or whatever, or just got out of that. And then Twitter was kind of a thing. Like this is this is how old it was, right? I needed help with that. I needed someone to look at what I had already because I did have a Twitter account. Um, I did have, I think I still had MySpace. I don't think I was using it though. And then the Facebook, but I, I needed someone to help me figure these things out and just sit down with me. But I didn't know, Hey, social media consultant. I don't even know if it get, existed back then. It probably didn't. And if it did, it probably cost a shitload of money because it was mad new. Right. So what I did was me being cheap and whatnot, I was like, well, let me hire an intern. Let me get an intern from like a school somewhere. And I did. And I found this one ignorant ass girl. I think she went to Temple or something. And she uh, she was nice in the beginning. <laughs> then it was like it went downhill from here. But she knew uh, all about all the social media platforms like most young kids know. Her delivery was fucked up. But other than that, she knew I didn't know anything about nothing. She opened up uh, some accounts for me and was able to start advertising the business because if you heard the story about me starting diamond entertainment management i do believe i was advertising on craigslist yeah so she she it was it took her advice and a little bit of her guidance to point me in the direction before i fired her 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 ass because it's bananas but anyway social media consultant try it try it you already know how these so the algorithms i don't know about the algorithms i know youtube pretty well um i'm decent you know what i'm saying i'm decent with it but you want someone that is skilled that could look at your whole um situation and give you advice and guidance that way and if you're that person to do it and you can do it make that a business all right. It's in high demand, high demand, high, high demand. <laughs> it's in high demand, yo. All right. Another one. This is, I'm on number eight, by the way, if anybody's counting. Yeah. So I'm on number eight. Being a personal chef or a caterer, if you like cooking and you know you're good at cooking, and that's a lot of us, I'm good at cooking. All right. I'm the shit. There's some people that are just better than me. You know what I mean? And you really like this and you know you've coached for people. They love your food. They love your style. They love what you cook, all that. Make that a business, all right? So you can start off small. Do do little events here and there. Um, you know, maybe a friend of yours is uh, has an anniversary coming up and they want a chef for the night. You know, you be that chef. I don't know. Get creative with it. And this is how you build your clientele, people. Uh, get people who are into meal prep. I, I really wish I had the time to meal prep the way I need to, but I just don't have it. But I have, I think I'm going to, I keep saying this, but I'm going to go into 2023, 2024, looking for a chef that can cook well, in particular, Dominican food. I love Dominican, Mexican food, all that uh, island food. But that can cook like that, that can cook healthy, just do some meal prep for me, hook it up, and I swear I I'll pay whatever 
needs to be paid. <laughs> okay. But that is actually a really good business and it can never go out of style as long as there's people on earth that need to eat food. Right. So you're good. You're that's a good, strong industry to be in real quick. Another quick story time for you. All right. Boom. So I told y'all, you know, I, I had a very interesting uh, creative background as an adult. I wasn't really responsible and things like that in the third and whatnot. So this was the last time I was evicted. <laughs> this is the, this is, this is one of my last times I was evicted. Right. And, and, and this one really, it hit home. It was really fucked up because I was homeless again. Right. Like, and I'm a, an adult. I have two kids. I'm in my, what is it? Thirties, I guess. Thirties, forties whatever age group I was in at that time. And no, 30s. I was in my 30s. And I actually had to live with my home girl that I knew from school just um to protect the crazy. I will not say her name. I will call her Susan. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna call her Susan. All right. Batshit crazy Susan. But at the time I didn't realize it was batshit crazy. So I grew up with um Susan, her and I went to creative and performing arts together. Uh, that was my home girl. And I came to her like, listen, I got evicted again for the millionth time. Now she got actually evicted way more times than me in life. So she got it. And she was like, yeah, you can stay with me until you get yourself together and you know, whatever. So me and the kids stayed with her. Boom. This lady was crazy as all get out, which inspired me to get the fuck out sooner right i wasted zero time in the meantime in between time i'm paying attention to how crazy susan was moving crazy susan had kids when i met her in high school she was pregnant and apparently she graduated from high school pregnant there's no judgment here there's no judgment here however sis was broke as fuck right? But she was always on welfare. She had kids, so she always got food stamps. Sis was an amazing, amazing baker. I, I don't know how her food game was because I wasn't eating her crazy ass food, but her baking skills, though, were bananas. Like, yo, so what she was doing was she was getting all these food stamps because of all the kids that she had, right? And mind you, her kid... Most of her kids weren't even living with her, all right. But whatever, I, I don't, I don't knock anybody's hustle. Make it do what it do. And she would take her food stamps and she would buy all the food that she needed for her baking business. And now she made, she had this hustle where she was baking food and 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 uh, selling it to her home girls, and then it it changed into like. Uh, businesses so her homegirls would go to work and talk about all the cakes and cookies and shit that crazy ass Susan was making and then it just grew from there and I was there to witness that you know I was there to witness crazy Susan's beginnings her humble beginnings using government food stamps no judgment to buy her food for her baking business. And one of the things, I mean, I can give it to her. One thing about her and I, we're both Capricorns. And as much as I love talking about Philly, I love talking about being a Capricorn even more. And we're extremely hard workers and we're very intelligent. We are the most intelligent sign. If anybody wants to tussle, you know where to see me at. You find me, we can link up. <laughs> it's a proven fact. We're the most intelligent sign. Now, crazy ass Susan was mad intelligent and she utilized what she had to the best of her ability to pull herself out of poverty. Was she delusional a lot of the times? She was. Was she bad shit crazy? She was. But when it came to her business, sis was a genius. And one of the things that she did was she got cool with like the local deli. I think it was like a local pizza shop in her area. So when she had um, uh, like a big catering service to do or a job to do 
or if she had a gig where she needed space and she needed to just put more items in the oven, so on and so forth, the restaurant owner or the deli owner allowed her to use her restaurant or their restaurant at night after they closed. And I thought that was like mad creative, like that shit crazy. Susan was crazy as hell. But when it came to the business, that was creative. I would have never thought to get down with like a pizza shop but it makes sense. They got that hot ass oven. That, you know what I'm saying? Like you could bake, you could, you know, keep it pushing. And that's what she did. Now, fast forward, Psycho Susan is now married and her business has thrived. It is absolutely amazing from what I heard. Um, I have seen her advertise on the radio looking crazy as shit, but you don't see what a person looks like on the radio. So she, they she recorded herself on the radio. That's how I knew she was looking crazy. <laughs> anyway, she was advertising her business on the radio. Amazing, right? She became uh almost like a local celebrity in in Philly. Amazing, right? Um, I haven't followed her since this was like a couple of years ago. I know then she was also a personal chef. She would go to people's homes, cook for them as needed. Uh, but her business did take off. So again, if that's your twist, handle it. You know, if you've been doing this anyway for the family, handle it. I know, you know, uh, we do the platters. A lot of y'all do platters and you sell your platters when you're trying to get a couple of dollars and things like that or whatever. That's what's up. Make it a business. All right. It's in high demand. People love your food. Handle it. All right. Now, another thing, again, this is like, something you can do from home is resume writing, have a resume writing service show. Amazing. Yo. You may not think that's a thing. It's a thing. Why? Again, again, as long as there's people out here on this earth, there's going to be jobs and people need resumes. I know plenty of people in my profession, back back when I was in workers' comp, I don't know how to do a good resume, all right? If you're good at writing, if you're good at creating resumes, start a resume writing service, yo. LinkedIn is is still popping, yo. Uh, what is it? Back, not, ooh, I was, I was about to say, I was about to say some uh, no-name company that didn't make sense. What is it? Uh, the glass door. I was about to say back door. <laughs> glass door is still open. Um, people are always looking for employees and they want a resume. When uh, I just hired a VA that I had to fire, I should have asked for her resume. I didn't. That was my dumb fault. But uh, lesson learned. Lesson learned. But a resume and a good resume will get somebody in the door. And if you know you can write some good ass resumes, then make that into a business. Now, real talk, you even have chat GPT. Chat GPT. If you know anything about chat GPT, everything's turning AI now. You can even go on chat GPT and, and let, let that help you write some good ass resumes. All right. Now, for I'm going to tell you about me in, in mine and what I do. So back in the dizzle, like I told you, I was, I was a shady motherfucker. I did what I needed to do. It's not like I was shady. I did what I needed to do to survive, but I was still ignorant minded, but I knew I needed to get money. I knew I needed to do what I needed to do to pay my bills and whatnot. Once I realized that I needed to pay bills. But anywho, so I've told y'all how I was in corporate for over 14 years as a workers' comp adjuster. I told y'all that whole story, okay? Now, the reason why I was in corporate for so long and I was able to switch jobs with from one big insurance company to the next and continue to be a high-wage earner every single time I went from company to company it was because of my resume. My resume writing game is the shit. You hear what I'm saying? 
Like I make myself sound phenomenal, even though I'm already phenomenal, but on paper with the resume writing, son, listen, every time I submitted a resume, I got hired. Boom. If I didn't get hired, I would redo my resume and make it more perfect. You dig what I'm saying? But on 99% of the time, the way my writing, my resume writing skills were, that's how, that's how I got the jobs. Like, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I got colorful with my resumes. I mean, I made up a lot of shit. You know, I got creative or whatever. But what are they going to do? Check? But anywho. <laughs> and they didn't. You know what I mean? I was saying I was, I had positions I never worked before, got hired into the positions. Why? Why did you do that, Tamaya? Because I knew the job was going to train me. One thing about jobs, people, if you didn't know, is regardless of what your skill set is, they want to retrain you because they need you to work how they want you to work. So, I mean, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm a master uh, credit, I mean, not credit person, um, workers comp person. Now, they knew there was no such thing as a master workers comp, <laughs> but they caught on to what I was trying to say, and they were like, oh, she's skilled in workers comp. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. So, remember, I told you I went from being a medical-only adjuster and got promoted all the way to worker, senior workers comp adjuster to the third power. Yeah, that's a pretty big ass, long ass title, right? It sounds pretty fucking important. Before I got all the seniors and all that shit, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just saying whatever I needed to say on my resume so I could get that bread. And that's what happened. So if you can do the same for people and write amazing ass resumes, make that a business, make it a business, yo, and get money because you're, you're also helping people through all this. I hope you are catching on, right? I'm saying all these amazing uh, uh, jobs and hustles that you could turn into a, a business, a legitimate business, but you're also helping people. It's a business. You're getting this bread. I'm showing y'all how to do it, but understand you're helping people. So go on now, help people do that. Do that. All right. It's not costing you a whole lot of money. If that, you know, now, the last one is pretty common. Um, a lot of y'all know are doing this already. Um, it, it's everywhere. Again, especially with the rise of social media and where everything's going with that. Being a photographer, being a photographer, having a photography company is where it's at right now. Why? Because there's so many entrepreneurs. They need to get their business going. People need headshots. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, people need headshots for their business. A lot of companies want their employees to have professional social media presence and they need headshots. They need professional photos. Uh, again, if you have if you have your own business, you have a product that needs to be sold and hire a photographer get a camera, get a good working camera, again, develop and create a portfolio. You could do events. People are still getting married. People are still having babies. You dig what I'm saying? People are still having celebrations, conferences. People love just getting their picture taken all the time. Just be that, be that, be a, be a photographer, have a photography service. It's amazing. Good money in that. Good money. You can travel. You could charge people for travel time. You could pay people, charge people for, you know, the time that you're there. You can have them put in a deposit. I mean, get creative people. This is your business. This is your business. You can do this, but definitely build a portfolio because again, people love looking at pictures, hopping online, get a good website going where you can just see all of your work and they'll want to hire you. It's it's cool. It's it's very easy to become a photographer. All you got to do is have amazing pictures. I'm not saying all you have to do like that's nothing, but have a great 
portfolio. Take amazing pictures is what I'm trying to say. Take pictures of the sunset with a few birds flying by. All of that. You dig me? And I feel that I feel that's a very common uh, hustle turned business, but very much lucrative. You have artists that need their photos shot, their photos all the time. I need a photographer personally because I need to do updated pictures and stuff, but that is a great business, in my opinion, to change from a hustle to a business or even just want to jump into it and make it an actual business. Now, even though I'm done with my list, right, I do want to kind of give you guys like some tips that I learned along the way. Nothing long and drawn out, just a few points. Uh, again, I'm trying to encourage you, especially those that don't feel confident in yourself that you could do it. You can do it. Y'all can do anything you set your mind to. Just like how I moved. If I if I believe it, then I see it. I can achieve it. You dig me? Yeah, that's cliche and it sounds corny as hell. But that's just how I, I move. And you can move like that too. But I've learned a few things along the way. And I do want to share these things with you as you consider becoming an entrepreneur. Um, one of the things that I feel is mad important is that when you start your business, make sure you're in an industry that you love, not like, not you think as I, but legit love, thoroughly enjoy. Because one thing about having your own business is it does take time and effort. So if you're doing a lot of what you love, it does not feel like time and effort and stress. And I mean, if it's there, it's there, but it's not as heavy as if you were just doing it because you just got to get some bread. You dig me? Just like if you work at a job and that's not your job, that's not your company and you're stressed out and you're working and yeah, you're making money, but you hate it and people see that. But if you have a business that you are in an industry where you love it, it's going to reflect in your business. It's going to show people are going to feel that energy. The clients are going to feel that. It's going to show up in your work. If you choose to be in an industry where people see your product, you have a product that you're selling and you love it, right? It's going to show. So be sure you pick an industry that you love, you thoroughly enjoy, you more than like, more than like, because it will also give your business longevity. You're going to stay in it. You're going to make sure it works. Um, even if you do different versions of the same thing, you're going to stay in that industry because you love it. And it's going to make you a lot of money and it will satisfy a lot of people. So be sure to, to do that. Another tip I wanted to share is real rep, make sure you're choosing an industry that's in high demand. Okay. Especially when you're starting off, that's dumb, important, yo, it's like dumbass important because most businesses, if you don't know already, fail within the first two years, right? That's what they say within the first two years you want to be in an industry that's demanding. Like I'm telling you, like social media is where it's at. Online is where it's at. Working from home is where it's at. You dig me? So like you want to be in an industry where it's high in high demand so you don't fall off. You want to build clientele. You want to generate money. You dig me? You don't want your clients to be few and far between. You want to be booked and busy, yo. You want to be booked and the fuck busy, not not booked and fucking just drawing like you don't that you don't want to do that. So if you choose a business that you love and that's in high demand, you should be good. Now, be careful about being in a business that you love, but people never heard of it. OK, because it may not be successful and I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it a beam with you. It's not that it's not going to be successful. It's just that you're gonna be in an industry, you're gonna have a company that you love, you find amazing, but you're gonna have to work 20 times harder 
to make it work because not a lot of people never really heard that shit before, right? Or you have to be in a particular specialized group of people that know what the fuck industry you're in. And only you and them know it. You dig me? And you just have to be careful, careful with that. I don't want y'all to start a business and you're broke as fuck, right? And you're like, well, Tamaya, you told me to be in a business that you love. Like, for example, like, let's say you love ants. And you feel that more and more ants need to be connected with each other and how the black ants and the red ants need to coexist in harmony. All right. And you make that a business because this is what you love. Side note, I support whatever you do. You're a grown ass adult uh, at this point. Um, do you, you know, I, like I said, I, I, I don't never knock anyone's hustle, but I'm just trying to show y'all how to be smart about it. Anyway, back to you and your red and black ants. I support that. However, is that really an industry in high demand? I mean, black and red ant compatibility, is that a thing? I don't know, because I'm not in the ants. I like them, but I will step on a motherfucker if I have to get that raid out. You dig me? I don't know. But you might know. You might be a master, like an ant master. Maybe you got your degree in ants. I, I don't know. All right. But you just want to be careful about being in an industry where motherfuckers don't know shit about ants like that, unless you're part of the red and black ant community, which you could be, you could the fuck be now, if that's the case and you're in a specialty community, what do you think you should do? You should have high ass prices. Why? Because that is not a common, well-known industry. And it's few and far between. You don't know if you're going to have clients out like that. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. It may be difficult to get your business off the ground because you're stuck on these black and red ants coinciding and all this shit. And no. Nah. All right. So just be careful. That's all I'm saying. But if you got it already and you're like, yo, I'm part of the whole ant underground ant squad, handle your business. You know more about it than I do, but I just want you to be careful about creating a business with the industry that you love that is not in high demand because you're going to be broke as fuck. All right. That's all I'm saying. Now, my next tip is be careful spending too much money out of your pocket. If you don't have to pay for services, don't. All right. Now I, you might be getting some, some bread. You started the business and everything like that. And you're like, yo, I'm getting all this extra money. Let me pay for this person to set up uh, this for me. Let me get this person to do this for me. But it's like small stuff that you honestly real rap can do yourself or have one of your kids to do it or some shit like that. Just be careful because the goal is to bring in money to make money and it invests a lot of the profits back into the business, which is something else we'll talk about in the future. But yeah, that's what you want to do. But just be careful of that, right? And then my my main one, my last and ultimate, ultimate tip, okay? Be yourself. Be a motherfucking self, right? You're going to choose an industry that many people before you have done it They've tried it. They've mastered it. They are amazing at it. They're better than you at it. Okay. But the difference between them and you is your you. <laughs> your you. That's the difference. It doesn't matter what everybody else has done because your clients are there for you. There's only one you. Your uniqueness is what brings people to your business. Okay. Don't try to copy anybody else's style. Don't try to look at everybody else and say it within your same industry and say, Oh, yo, like, let me, let me do that. Like they're doing that. I'm not doing that. Let me do that. You know what I'm saying? Cause then what's going to happen is you're going to start looking like that. And then you're not unique anymore. You don't lost yourself. All right. And that's not what your clients want. That's not what they want. They want you. 
and only you. Now, sometimes uh, you will lose yourself if that's the case, so you want to be careful. You might feel intimidated just to get your feet off the ground. Like, let me tell you something like real quick. When I first started credit repair and I started getting my clients and, uh, you know, it was, I was getting business pretty regularly. Um, sometimes my clients would bring up other credit repair specialists and ask me if I know them. I still get that to this day. Like, Oh, do you know, SpongeBob, the, the credit repair specialist from Florida? Nah. So like, I never paid attention to anyone else because I didn't want to be influenced even uh, like subconsciously. I didn't want to be influenced and I just wanted to stick with what I knew. And I moved like that, honestly, until maybe I want to say maybe a year ago um, because I feel as though, uh, what's the best way I can say it? I feel that I could just, um, I'm confident and strong enough with my own foundation and how I move anyway that I can start slightly paying attention to others, but it has no influence on me whatsoever, right? Now, I'll give you an, another example. I had a client tell me out of all the people on social media that they talk to, um, in, that that I'm sorry, that they follow on social media, that they listen to on social media regarding credit and credit repair, my channel stood out. And he said that, is something about me. I don't talk the same way as other credit repair specialists talk. I don't look the same way. I come off like I know exactly what I'm talking about and I care about what I'm doing. And like, yo, that means a lot to me because I do care. I do legit care. And, and, and that's something I battle with because in business, people are like, yo, get your money. And then, you know, business is never personal, which is facts, as facts all day. But what do you do with the caring part? You know what I mean? So, like, if you're, this kind of goes back to what I'm saying from the rip, like, get in an industry that you love and keep in mind that regardless of the situation, you're helping someone, okay? You're helping people. And that's major. And it meant a lot for me, uh, that he said that because it came on time. Like I was just, just starting to think about changing my look, <laughs> switching the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Not like we all switch and evolve because you're supposed to whatever, but I meant like, you know, do I have the glittery, sparkly Christmassy lights in the background? Do I get on and like every other credit repair specialist, yo, 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 hey, you know, what's up, everybody? This is my credit repair. Hey, my credit repair besties. Nah, son, that ain't me. That's just not me. That's just not who I am. I can't do it. Right. I mean, yo, know, I can't, if you notice, like, if you get on YouTube and you look out like credit repair stuff, Everybody got these YouTube thumbnails where they're making these dumbass facial expressions. All right. The YouTube algorithm is saying that's what's popping. That's what's bringing in more people to your channel. Well, guess what? I guess I'm not going to have that many people to my channel. Because if you look at my thumbnails, I don't do none of that shit. And I still get clients. I mean, if, if the difference is... I make these dumbass faces and put them as thumbnails and I get millions of more subscribers and as opposed to not doing it and just getting the, the subscribers I'm getting now, I'm cool with that. Yo, I'm the fuck cool. I just, it's just not in me to be like the masses. That's not what my clients like when I'm doing my consultations and when y'all is signing up with me, y'all don't want to hear that shit. Y'all don't want to see that shit. You dig me? So it's just not what I feel comfortable with. Just stick to yourself. Like I said, be you. That's what your people want you for. That's what separates you from others, you know? But you know what my thing is? <laughs> my look is me picking up a random wig off the floor, brushing it off real quick with my fingers, 
slapping it on my head, maybe, just maybe, putting on some lipstick, if I remember, and spitting mad facts into the camera and into the microphone. All right, cursing a little here and there. You know, it's all right. It's all right. Those that don't like it, you know what you can do. But this is what my clients like. This is why they fuck with me heavy. This is why I fuck with them heavy. You know what I'm saying? When they're serious. Okay. But just don't lose who you are. You know, one of the great things about being an entrepreneur, especially if you've been thinking about it, if you've been kind of having daydreaming, having ideas about one day owning your own company or whatever, is it is freeing. It's very liberating. And it's a part of you that you're sharing with the universe. So don't change. Don't don't change up. Evolve, grow for the better, yes. But don't imitate others because you're looking at them and your pocket watching. That ain't your pocket, yo. Don't worry about it. Worry about your own and your own blessings, all right? All right, yo, so I'm going to wrap this right on up. It's amazing talking to y'all as usual. Hopefully this helps. I hope this helped a whole lot. You know what I mean? But please, y'all, take your credit seriously. Personal credit is soon. You won't be able to fix it. Get your credit fixed like yesterday. It, it's not that deep. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to do it yourself. You go to fixmycreditnail850.com get some DIY joins. If not, schedule a free consultation with me under Fix My Credit, uh, now 850.com. Descriptions are always in the links. Uh, be sure to follow me on YouTube, um, on the Airways Now podcast, Spotify, Apple coming soon. What else? Uh, Amazon Music, uh, iTunes, iHeart. Ew, I said iTunes. I don't even know what the fuck iTunes is, but y'all feel me. Everything is in the description. Get on over to the business side, y'all. Create a business. You got skills. You're sleeping on yourself. Stop sleeping on yourself, yo. Stop it. Stop it. Be all you can be without being in the army and just start your own business. Get on the business side. Get up, get that 100,000, 500,000 line of credit. You dig me where you can't get that shit on a personal side. Let's do it. All right. Now, thank you guys for tuning in to Coast to Coast Credit. Be sure to follow me on all my social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Insta, Greasy. Yeah, I mean, I said some of my uh, uh, my stations on the air on the airways. Right. Don't forget, comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Holidays are coming up. Be safe, y'all. All right. But I wish you the very best of luck on your credit journey. You take care. Bye-bye.